you know, I'm a musician, not the best, doesn't know very many conventional things when it comes to playing guitar and singing, but I always got this one philosophy where you don't really need to sing good and play really extremely good to make good music and stuff like that, you know what I mean? There's this, like, misconception that you have to, like, sing really super good. Like, some kind of, like, X Factor American Idol thing and play guitar like some kind of technical kind of guy. Like, they know all the music theory and they know how to play everything by the book, you know, to make great music, you know. And I think people always get that misconception because I don't know why. Where this even started, you know, but personally, I never thought that, like, you had to sing good or play guitar like fucking John Petrucci to make good music, you know, and stuff like that, because, you know, I see, like, some of these people who are into rock music and stuff like that, bitching and moaning about, like, how rock music was simplistic guitars and so, and just like your vocals, they kind of sound a little inco incomprehensible or a little garbled up. And if, if you want to call it that, it, it might have been like the studio production or something like that. I don't know what you might, what you might call it. And it wasn't always in key, but well, I listen. Well, if you're like an open-minded person like me, when you listen to these types of music, what what these guys are just bitching and moaning about, which I brought up earlier. Actually, they didn't really sound that bad, honestly, as far as music goes. They were just, they were just like, you know, you're, you, I mean, you know, you know, they didn't really sound bad, let's put it that way. I mean, of course, if there's some room for improvement, like every other musician uh, has, but, you know, there's always, you're never gonna be the master when it comes to music, you know, because, you know, you never stop learning, you never stop, you know, you never stop getting to a certain level where you're like, where you're like some kind of like, you know, whatever, you know, but I just feel like when these, these, some of these rockers, particularly these, you know, so certain ones, I'm not saying every single one of them are like that, but certain rock music fans think like, oh, a band like Green Day or Nirvana or Blink-182, like, that writes these very simple chords on guitars and doesn't sound like it's very that hard to play on guitar in general and is not good music and they think a band like, with like nine minute pieces of music on in on a record with a lot of tr tricky chord progression changes and like a lot of technical shit is good music. I never quite understand that bullshit from their top three miles to be honest with that because you know you don't. I always came to the notion that like you don't really need to sing super good or play super good to make good music. What these people are saying is very contrary to what rock and roll is all about. You know, rock music was never intended to be perfect or anything like that. You know, I think Dave Grohl said it best himself too at one point. You know, and that's like saying rock music from the fifties. You know, if you listen to the rock music from the fifties, you know that it's very it's just it's just a simple three chord progression when it comes to the verse, chorus, verse, intro, solo, you know, stuff like that, and, you know, for, you know, you have to realize that Chuck Berry and Bo Diddley were not the best singers, and were not the most technical guys on guitar, but they wrote some great songs and stuff like that, and they wrote great music, and, you know, I didn't think, I mean, I don't know what is up with people's asses when they think, like, you have to sing super good, like, you have to sing in key and in pitch, and all the fucking goddamn time, and had to play guitar like some kind of fucking super shredder to be a, a great musician or the best, you know, you know, because I never understood that whole philosophy or their kind of like logic when it came to music, you know, because, you know, Kurt Cobain and Nirvana was, are of course, one of the greatest rock bands of all time, probably the best band of the 90s. And, you know, Kirk, some of the songs on Nirvana you listen to, like, there are some songs where Kurt Cobain sings very a little garbled up, incomprehensible. It's really hard to tell what, what what you know. You know, it's hard to tell what he's what the lyrics are and all that kind of stuff. What he's singing about, and and it sounds like, it sounds like some of the the, the the musical arrangements are like you know. Of course, the musical arrangements are nothing like 
the rock bands previously that were that was mainstream throughout the 80s and stuff like that, you know. But it was new and different, and people seemed to really like it, and it it it, it showed the world that you don't need to be the best singer and the best guitar player to change the world, you know, and I was speaking to a friend of mine who is really into rock music, and she even said herself, technical music doesn't always mean great music, you know, I mean, some sometimes some of the more simplistic kind of stuff can be considered great music too, if you open your minds to it, you know, and I mean, great music is out there, it doesn't have to be like super fancy or super polished up in the studio or be super technical on the guitar like some tricks and licks and all this, all these weird por- chord progressions and these these all these different things going on with the inst- musical arrangements and you don't need like the best technical singer with a seven octave range to make to make a, a good to make good music you know because you know thing is well it, it the best music is always like you know if you let, if it is to be open minded, you know, you have to be open minded to to really love good music and stuff like that. It doesn't really matter if it's like a little bit on the simplistic guitar side and just like you know, like a band like Green Day or Blink One Eighty Two. They wrote really good songs, but one of the biggest bands in the world, you know. And you don't really need to play. And sometimes some great music can be like you know some of the more technical stuff, it really depends what it is though, because, you know, music is very subjective, that's why you always have to open your mind when it comes to music, to, when you think, what's good and what's not good, you know, I mean, I can honestly tell you that I don't know what music I think is personally bad, other than a lot of metalcore, deathcore stuff out there, I mean, I don't really like it that much, to be to be honest with you, I think it sounds very garbled up and stuff like that but hey i'm not gonna judge you if, if you like it you know i mean you like it you like it you know but but i would honestly kind of tell you that you don't really have to play super well or sing super well to make good music and that's my philosophy because rock and roll is never about being perfect or being knowing all this extensive theory when it comes to music and stuff like that of course you need to be on a creative side think outside the box and come up with good ideas and stuff like that the to, to make something really worth listening to, but, you know, it's all subjective, you know, music is a very subjective thing, and this is just a short rant video, and, yeah, just subscribe to my YouTube if, if you can, and check out my other videos and stuff like that, maybe even check out my band, just go on your computer or smartphone or tablet and Google Patrick Lou Band or Heavy Sigma, like I said, Music is, there's good music out there and there's also bad music out there, but you don't necessarily have to sing good and play good to make good music, you know, and, and that's my philosophy.